Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Lucas Charles, a staff engineer on the Static Analysis Team at GitLab. And today we are going to be demoing a new capability for custom rule sets. So let's go ahead and uh, share the screen and get started. Okay. So um, with GitLab 16.1, we'll be introducing a new capability uh, for specifying a remote uh, custom rule set configuration. For those unfamiliar, custom rule sets is a capability within the static analysis and secret detection categories to uh, provide a override to the default rule sets that our analyzers use. Now this can be very powerful for doing things like disabling predefined rules um, or overriding specific rules, say increasing the severity of SQL injections or something of that nature. Now this new capability that we're added, adding is called uh, specifying a remote configuration file. Now, once a file is specified as described in the docs here uh, under the GitLab directory with the corresponding file name, um, generally this must be on inside the project that is being scanned. Um, with this new capability here, the file can actually live in a separate project and be shared across a, a number of projects or groups. Now, the basic format for this feature is to specify a CI/CD variable um, called SAS rule set git reference, or um, in the case of Secret detection, it would be secret detection rule set git reference, uh, also described in the docs here. And uh, it would match this precise format. Now, uh, the basic format here is a optional um, authentication project path and then an optional git shop. Now, this project path, um, it will be expecting a file matching the default path as described above. And then that file will be loaded remotely from whatever project it's specified in. The project using that file is described here. Now there is a uh, example down below that we could click here to showcase that, but we're going to just go do it live. So here we have a project uh, specified as uh, our demo project. We have a, a default SAS job, which you can see in the pipeline here. And by default, we're seeing no vulnerabilities, which is expected. Uh, we have a fairly simple configuration, which just loads the SAS job. We have a readme, and here is our main Go file, um, which includes this dangerous eval function. Now, this dangerous eval function is a custom function, so uh, it will not be detected by default by our uh, static analysis scanner. But um, our organization in particular is concerned about this, and so we want to write a custom rule set that detects this. So we have a separate project here called Security Policies Demo Private. Um, as indicated by the lock, this is a private project. And it includes um, a readme, um, a custom rule set configuration here, and sec a security policy configuration, which is optional. Uh, just an example of how you could include both your policies and your uh, custom rule sets in one project. Now, uh, this configuration is pretty simple. Um, for SEMGREP scanner, it includes a override. So it overrides the existing configuration with a, a file and specifies the file here. This file is in our root here. And the file contains a single rule called dangerous eval. And the pattern detects a function called dangerous eval, returning the message function dangerous eval detected and a error level severity. Uh, using this configuration, this right here should return one result. So what we're going to do is we're going to update this project here to specify this private project. Let's go ahead and edit it. And then we're going to add a variable. Go back to our docs. Copy our variable name. And over here, go ahead and specify our project. Now, by default, this, of course, will use the uh, default branch. We could specify a, a commit shot after this, whatever that would be. But in this case, we're fine with the default. So we'll stick there. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and commit these changes. The um, expected result here, however, is that the 
pipeline will pipeline job will fail to pull this in because this is a project that is private as expected. And so we'll go ahead and go to our and refresh here and go to our pipeline jobs. And we see a fail. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a YAML error. Now, um, this time we are expecting our pipeline to run. Our pipeline will fail and it will return a validation error as expected. And then um, we will follow this up with adding the appropriate authentication. While that's running, I'm going to just go ahead and hop over here to our private project. The way that we're going to specify this here is by creating a project access token. We'll call it custom, we'll set demo. Uh, this expires in a month, which is fine by us. Read repository. Okay, I'm going to copy that. Now, over in this project, uh, you can see that the authentication required failed, as expected. We'll go ahead and go over to our CI CD variables. And this access token I want to add here. Now, we could put this directly in the CI configuration, but um, as best practices go, it's probably a bit safer here. Okay, so we are now going to specify this here. Now for the authentication description here, we need a user and a password. So when generating a project access token, a bot user is generated as well. So we'll go ahead and go over to the members and you can see this bot user right here. So we'll first paste in, this will be our user, and then we're going to use the policies access token variable. Okay, and I'll go ahead and copy that, and we'll place the user here, and let's give it a shot. Now on the subsequent run, uh, we are expecting the job to complete as expected. Looks like the job has succeeded. We'll go ahead and go back to the pipeline here and check our security tab. And we are now seeing a report for a dangerous ETHOL in Maine. And uh, that is the demo of specifying a remote configuration file. Um, I will include a link to the issue and documentation in the uh, video description. And uh, please feel free to reach out to us with any questions. Thank you.